Hi, I'm Kate Kendall. I've been working for the Camellia Sciences Tea House in Montreal for nine years and a half. I've worked as the manager of the tea room, been to Japan with the importer Yuga Merchi, and been a teacher at the tea school. I still work part-time in Camellia because tea is a passion, but I'm also a high school teacher. So we could say that I train younger generation because I often speak about tea in class and I even prepare tea for some of my students. This year, with the pandemic, everything is a bit different. I have to teach online classes and I can share tea with friends. Local shops must adapt if they want to survive. Except for the tea in this sketch, I decided to use local products, local music to encourage local businesses and artists to celebrate resilience. The tea I'm presenting you today is a Ceylon New Vitana Kande flowery grade with a lot of silver buds. The leaves are beautiful and curvy, small but not broken. The tea is sold by Camellia Silences Tea House based in Quebec, Canada, imported by the renowned tea expert Kevin Gascoigne. The factory of New Vitana Kande is situated in the Sabaragawura province. This is the largest tea region of Sri Lanka. The factory is located at the southwest of the region. I chose this tea because even though it's grown in low altitude, it is a very good quality product at a fair price compared to high altitude teas. The factory of New Vitana Kande works with 6,000 families to get the leaves that they need to supply the demand. The families of pluckers are responsible for a portion of tea gardens and they sell the leaves to the factory, a way to get better income. Since most of the pluckers are women, it is a way for them to have access to better salary. The New Vitana Kande factory is involved in social responsibility initiatives such as developing roads in rural areas, upkeep local temples and community development projects. What I'm brewing today is a tea mocktail base with this tea that I developed especially for this time of the year in Quebec. I love to mix local product with tea when I prepare tea-based mocktails. I discovered while walking in the forest that fear buds are especially wonderful with Ceylon tea. I highly recommend you to try it if you have the opportunity. Anyway, in my opinion, tea is always better brew in nature. Have you noticed that in the country with fresh air, the tea is always good and reveals new flavors? It feels like there is even more space to taste it. It matches perfectly with a strawberry and maple syrup shortcake pie proudly made in Montreal by Le Domaine des Quinze Loups. Ceylon's tea are usually great tasted with milk and the New Vitana Kande is not an exception. The cream in this pie complete the tea so well that it feels like they were meant to be together. Maple syrup is simply divine with the Ceylon tea. It brings forward a strong aromatic profile. The sweetness of the Ceylon's barley sugar note is enhanced by the sweetness of the maple syrup. It's brilliant. The Ceylon teas can be tricky to brew if you don't like the briskness, but this Ceylon can be very refreshing. Personally, I love to brew it in a Yixing teapot because the clay tends to round the edge of the tea and make it smoother. I brew it at a lower temperature, around 70 degrees Celsius, in a smaller pot, not too long, just enough to get the note of barley sugar that I love in this tea, and it's great texture with just a hint of bitterness. I also love the subtle note of wintergreen and lightly smoked maple wood. This tea has a great attack, but is a bit short, so it leaves all the place to other tastes that develop slowly, or has a great aftertaste that you can mix with. For the mocktail, I use mainly Ceylon New Vitana Kande, maple syrup, a drop of strong infusion of fir buds and sprouts shoots, frozen Saskatoon berry at the bottom of the glass to cool down the beverage. The warm hop tea melt the iced Saskatoon berries and cook them just a little bit, bringing up their sweet acidic feature in the background but leaving the gold place to the tea and the strawberries coming just to occupy the aftertaste. So when we drink, the attack is the tea for sure. A little bit of smoke wood, malt, a hint of wintergreen, briskness, the tannic structure and robust texture, then barley sugar and cooked raspberry, the sweet resinous flavor of the fierce shoots and the delicate acidity of the spruce shoots. And just after that, a refreshing tingling sensation of acidity and fruitiness with the long finish of the strawberries. It's magic.